everybody, and welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh. Oh, that's right. Jacob's not here today. Jacob is his tummy wummy. <laughs> his tummy wummy. So Jacob is not here. He's home with his sick tummy wummy. But you know who you got? You got Papa Wolf. And I, so I thought what I'd do today is get into the emails. Um, as I look at the emails, uh, there's a couple from November, so I should probably dive a little deep and get in there. Uh, so we're going to get to the emails, but first, business. Let's get this out of the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So humbled and, and grateful for the incredible support that I have been receiving on this podcast and on the road. I'm going to tell you something else. Most importantly, I think I figured out the pot. I think I figured out like guys, as I've gotten older, this old man shit purpose has been super important to me. And, um, I think I've kind of figured out the purpose a, a couple of years back. I almost stopped stand up because I was like, what am I doing? I don't, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. No purpose. The we're, we've been getting so many messages in the meet and greets, we get so many conversations about how Jacob and I and our relationship and this podcast and, and the way we interact with each other is healing other people's families. Guys, this is, this is, this is it for me, man. That, that is exactly how crazy would it be in my brain if that is something that came out of this. So I'm super humbled and grateful by your stories and by you guys sharing all of um, your emotions with us and by, by families coming out and because it's not a family show, man, my, my standup is not, this is not Mickey Mouse, you know? And, but you guys are still coming out together as a family and sharing your stories with us. Super cool, super dope. Thank you guys so much. Um, I, I will tell you also the support on the road been bananas. We're in Huntsville. We're in Atlanta this week. You know, every Friday night is the mushroom show. You definitely want to kind of come out and check that out. Huntsville. And then next week, guys, Spokane already sold out. Missoula about to sell out. Seattle about to sell out. So if you want to come to those shows, I would get on that now. Dallas the week after that. And Nashville, guys, this month is going to be crazy. The guests we got lined up down there. I don't want to tip my hand, but this is going to be pretty special. So come down and check that out. And then I think we get Cincinnati at the end of the month. Besides that, guys, uh, we're going to get into some emails today. But before I do that, I want you to know. So I, um, I've started working uh, here in Nevada with the MPHY, which is the Nevada Partnership for Homeless Youth. And um, so we went and donated some stuff today. Uh, and if you're in Nevada or anywhere in this country, there is a, a homelessness problem with youth, with kids, you know, up to like 24, 25, especially. And so if you have some time to spare or you got a little extra dough, what a great place to spend it. But I'll tell you this, man, I'm going to tell you why it's near and dear to my heart. When I was raising the kids and single, I was on WIC. And WIC is a program that states set up for parents who can't afford to pay for things like milk or formula or shit like that. And as I was buying this stuff today, uh, like baby supplies and shit like that, it reminded me of that time in my life and how humiliating. First of all, they didn't make it easy, man. They would, when you brought your WIC stuff up, they would, they would shut down the, they would tell people in line behind you, we got to, this is going to take a while. So it was fucking humiliating to, to the way they set it up. And I remember being, going shopping at like midnight. So I didn't put myself through that. Not only that, and I know people meant well. But how humiliating. And I know people meant well because I would do the same thing now. But I can tell you from that situation, when people would sit behind me because it was taking a long time and they would go, let me just pay for it. It was 
crushing. So I, I, I this is something that's important to me. And, um, and, um, I, I encourage all of you to, if you're in a situation to give back, whether it's with your time or your money, but big shout out to MPHY here in Nevada. Um, and, uh, we will be getting involved. I'm going to get some of the kids on stage. Maybe we're going to teach a comedy class over there and we'll do a graduation down at Kimmel's comedy club where I do my show every Monday night. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, as I've gotten older, giving has become um, a much more um, important part of my life. So very um, honored and grateful to be able to be there. Now, look, we're going to get into the emails. And if you're watching, you're going to see me take off my cool Easy Rider glasses and put on my fucking, oh, I hate these falling down glasses. These glasses, I've said this before, I don't mind wearing glasses. If I was wearing glasses and they helped me see, that's fine. It's the fact that I have to pick these up and put them on to see makes me feel older. If I was just wearing glasses, not these glasses, but if I was just wearing glasses, I wouldn't feel old. I'd feel, hey, I'm a cool guy with glasses. But when I'm like, oh, what is that? Well, let me get my glasses. Yo. And then somebody suggested when I went in to buy glasses, because I buy them at CVS. Somebody suggested with my readers, they said, you should get one of those things so you can hang them around your neck. Hey guys, I already wear cardigans. If I have reading glasses that hang down around my neck, you might as well stick a fucking pipe in my mouth and get me reading Catcher in the Rye. That shit is not happening. Okay. I, what I want to do is I want to get contact lenses that I can, that I can, that are also readers, but are also like weird, like. Like, uh, like they should, what was that word, movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, last action hero where the bad guy, his, I had different eyeballs. I wouldn't mind putting in different eyeballs. That'd be cool. All right, everybody, let's get into your emails. I haven't looked at these yet. Um, and so let's just start, uh, at the furthest ones away. What, what this was sent on November 28th. Um, and so this should be, here we go. I'm just going to read them. So I don't know if they say anything terrible, but here we go. This is from Cameron. Cameron says, I'm an Oki in Norway. I tried to make your show when you came to Oslo, but I'm living in Stavanger and work wouldn't, couldn't make the trip. On a previous podcast episode, you were talking about Oslo and how people in Europe are more worldly. You said that it's not the case in the U.S. And I agree coming from a small town in Oklahoma. Politics aside, how can we make this change in the U.S.? Uh, I feel Americans think about world topics. It's so political. Or, uh, okay. Yeah, you know what? Here's the deal. I, I think, that, and I'm American, man, and I'm guilty of this, but ask me the history of Norway. Ask me, I don't even know if they have that president or a prime minister or if they just got a sculpture of like an ice god. I don't even know. Do you know what I mean? I don't fucking know. And there's, look, and I love, you guys, I love America. Great. I would even go on record and say it's the greatest country in the world, but it's got some fucking problems. And one of the problems is, is I, is that we don't seem to care about what's happening in other places in the world. And I, me, you're asking me, that's dangerous. So here's what I would say. I think everybody, everybody should have to do three things. One, spend a year working in customer service. Everybody should have to wait tables or work in, I think wait tables. If you wait tables for a year, you will learn how to speak to other human beings. Because some people will say some shit to you and you're like, you what? What the fuck? So I think everybody should have to do that. I think everybody, look, we should be setting something up where there's, we, we, at least people have, you know, a cheaper option, whether it's through school or something. Um, or whether they're just immersed in another culture here in this country. But I think you should be immersed in somebody else's culture at least for like a month. Just to be like, oh, yeah, yeah. other people are doing other shit out here. Do you know? Like, yo, I, I, I so I, I think that's the only way to do it, man. And also, if you start, like, start playing football in other countries, and I think maybe you might get more Americans. Not football. Americans clearly they have shown over and over again that football 
is not something they're interested in. However, football is. So that, listen, this is, I'm just spitballing guys. I'm just reading these for the first time. Um, but that's what I would say. Try to immerse yourself in another culture. And, uh, and definitely everybody should have to work in the, in the, uh, retail or customer service. I also think everybody should get punched in the face at least once in their life. It, it's really important. I think you can tell walking down the street who's been punched in the face and who hasn't. There's no doubt. Like, listen, I'm not, you guys, I'm not a political guy at all. You know that, all right? But I, I know for sure you can tell how he acts that Donald Trump has never been punched in the face. Be, be, because you, you, you can just tell, right? Everybody should get punched in the face one time just to be like, oh, is that what happens? You know, I've definitely, it definitely changed me. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> All right. So punch in the face, uh, uh, work in the restaurant, immerse yourself in another culture. What do you got? All right, here we go. Um, this is from Ty. Oh, okay. This, uh, that doesn't, wasn't a question. All right, here we go. Here's my name is Austin. I just caught your set of the funny bone of St. Louis. Okay, cool. Do you have any solid advice for an up and coming entertainers? We make music and are starting a music business. This is Austin. Austin, yeah, man. Here it is. Just keep doing it. Don't quit. If you're listen, if you're in art, keep doing it. Don't quit. It's a lot like I would tell people who are starting. I don't know how it is in music, but in stand up, hey man, it's like going to med school. 10 years. You got to go undergrad. You got to go grad. Then you got to get some hands on. 10 years until you figure out what the fuck is going on. But when people are like, where are the really great 24 year old comics? Yeah, Eddie Murphy comes along once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime, guys. It's just because comedy is so much about reps. And it's not like music reps that you can get in a studio without a crowd. You, the reps in front of a mirror in comedy don't matter. You need fucking reps. And so there's, it's very rare, right? Art is about reps, man, and not being scared to fail. Yo, I've fucking bombed a gazillion times. A gazillion times. Some of them pretty bad. Some of them, people, they were so bad that people got mad at me. Like they were mad they spent money. I don't blame them, you know? And I'd even say this. If you saw me when I was on Chelsea lately and you spent that money, I apologize. I thought I was a really good comic at the time. I wasn't. I wasn't. Looking back, I wasn't. I am now. But, but uh, it's reps, man. So I would tell you, if you're in the music business, reps. Don't be scared to take chances. Reps. Follow your instinct. Reps. Fuck what everybody else says. Reps. You know what I mean? And then borrow some money from your parents so you can make a record. All right. Here we go. Oh, Infinity Love. I'm going to get to you about this Oracle reading. Um, yes. Okay. That is a whole different situation. Okay. Here are some sh show name suggestions from Shay. Wolfgang. Ooh. Ooh. Wolf and Son sounds too much like an automotive shop. Bad Wolves, Howlin' Wolves, Wolf Wolf, Wolf and Wolf, Wolfman. Yo, Shay, I'm, I don't hate Wolfgang. I don't hate Wolfgang. Uh, I think we, we landed on Generation Wolf, but I don't hate Wolf, Wolfgang. All right, here we go. Ooh, Brandon, you have got a long email here. Okay. All right, I'm going to skip through that. Uh, I hope you can make the Dallas shows in March too, my friend. Uh, you don't have a question responses. Okay. I know you have people. Okay. I'm also not sure. They... Oh, you would like to, uh, you feel like a lot of the fans would be open to discussing their parenting styles as well. Yep. Okay. There's no questions there, but thank you. Um, podcast, podcast, podcast name. Wanted to say thank you. Um, okay. I'm sobbing at my desk listening to you two talk about your time on home improvement and all the people who helped you along the way. I can't thank you enough for being open and honest about how much you struggle financially in those early days. My husband and I have three kids, and while we make decent money, it's just expensive these days. Hearing your story gives us so much hope and reminds us of how far we have come. Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. Thank you, Amanda. I'm going to tell you something right now. And Shandy. 
Let me tell you something right now. Here's another thing. When I hear people say, I don't have enough money to have a kid, that's not how that works. Money does not make a happy kid. As a matter of fact, I think all of us can think of the richest kids who were the biggest fuck-ups, who were just like snorting heroin and shooting NyQuil under their toes, you know? So just know that money does not necessarily equate to happiness, especially for your kids. You know what they want? They want fun. And uh, I appreciate you saying that. And I, 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 I tried to keep it fun the entire time they were young and stupid and didn't know any better. Man, when they get old, er, it's really harder for them to have fun when you have zero money because, you know, their friends are like, you know, saying to them what my, my friends used to say to me, like, why are you wearing the same pants all week? I'm like, these are the pants, bro. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm wearing, these are the pants I got, dude. So that's why I'm wearing these pants. Yo, when I was growing up, so we used to have to go up into the attic. And we take out these old trunks. And you know when you're pulling something out of a trunk, it smells like that fucking trunk. No matter how many times you wash it, that's like, oh, you got... The... It's like somebody pulled the fucking Goodwill out of your attic and opened it up. And you're like, oh. So I would get... You know, I was the youngest of four boys. So every season was hand-me-down season. And I, I loved it because my mom would try to sell these. Look at this shirt. Isn't this nice? I'm like, yeah. I've seen it for the last eight years on the other three. Don't try to sell me on this new shirt. Is that stain new? I, yo, dude. And the jean shorts, they got shorter and shorter. But yeah, it's not about anything except making sure they know that they're loved, they're safe, and they're going to have a good time. And they just want to laugh and have fun. They love you, you know? I think parents' jobs, honestly, if I'm being honest, here's what I think your job is. I think a parent's job is this. I think kids are born 98% good. I really do. I think most kids, now some kids, you know, have chemical imbalances or sociopaths or whatever, but most kids are born 98% good. And your job as a parent is just not to fuck that up. I really believe that. I believe your kid mostly is born who who they are. Your job is not to fuck that up. And, and, and every little bink, every little ding, it drops it. Ding, 97. Boo. Oh, did you, did you get mad and throw a bag of flour against the wall? Ding, 85%. Do you know what I mean? Like you can hear the dings and you're going to ding them, dude. There's no such thing as a perfect parent. This is what makes me laugh when people get online and fucking comment on other people's parenting styles. Hey, everybody. Even if you're doing the exact right thing, okay? You're a great parent. Your kid is fucking scheduled to the nines. They're so smart. They're first super polite. They're engaging. But, yo, if your kid is super scheduled, you know what they're not good at? Just when something gets canceled, being flowy. Every positive has what somebody would see as a negative attached to it. So parent the way you're going to fucking parent as long as it's not dangerous to your kid and eat dicks with everybody else. You know, I'm sure. Look, guys, I was not a perfect parent and am not a perfect parent. I have a great relationship with my kids, but I'm fucked up. Everybody's fucked up. Guys, okay. I, 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 a long time ago, I was doing a one man. I was living in, one room with the kids and I was setting up this, this is when one man shows were kind of big in Hollywood. And by the way, this doesn't have anything to do with your email, Amanda, but just showing how everybody fucks up. Okay. And, um, so the one man shows were something that in Hollywood used to be a big deal, but you would go in basically it's you and you're in the theater and you tell a story. And I was telling a story about being a single dad. And, um, you know what fucking crazy that happened? I, I ended up getting a pretty big TV deal out of this. But I was writing it like one in the morning crying in front of my computer. I was just using it as catharsis. I couldn't afford a, a fucking therapist. And I was suddenly single with these three kids in this tiny little apartment, you know? And um, on the way to, you know, I only did it one time. 
And so you had to nail it. And it was at this little place called the HBO Playhouse Theater. And man, maybe I did too that weekend. On my way there, I'm at a stoplight, La Brea and Santa Monica. My window's open and a fucking feather comes floating down and goes right into my window and falls on my lap. And I was like, this show's going to be awesome. I was, I could not believe because I would, I was just had been saying to myself, am I doing the right thing? Is this, am I wasting my time on this? Should I have spent my time doing something else? Should I, should I have concentrated on stand up? And then this fucking feather floated into my window. And I was like, that's it. Let's go. Point being, I will tell you guys, not my proudest moment as a parent. This, this is my absolute most regrettable moment as a parent. And I would say we all have them. Not what I regret the most, but we all have them. And we all have made mistakes and lost our temper. And so there's no such thing as a perfect parent. And anybody who said, I've never lost my, my patience or my temper with my kid, you're either lying or you're a psycho and you have murdered animals. So um, we were in the luxury, we call them the luxury apartments because in LA and I'm sure other places in the country, they have these things that are called like the luxury apartments. And you walk in and there's like a shit stain on the wall. And you're like, this is a weird name. Paradise Villa. Really? Is that a blood stain on the carpet? You know? So I, it's one day I got the three kids. It's just one of those days. Uh, a gig that I was really counting on at the time, guys, $5,000 was going to take care of two months. I could get by on two grand a month. I could get by for sure. So this was going to take care, like, right? Five grand, huge deal. It got canceled. Um, I, there were some other things that were happening. I would, my oldest son was having trouble in school. He was fighting a lot. Um, and, um, you know, my ex was still, not living with us, but she was kind of in and out a little bit. And, um, uh, it, it was pandemonium at the house. It was just one of those days. The kids were like, ah! like, like, uh, in wild thornberries, um, fleas character, just running around like fucking crazy. And Caitlin, my daughter kept picking up Jacob and she was at the time, probably three or maybe four. And he was like a year, year and a half. And I was like, Kate, stop picking up your brother. You're going to drop him. And um, stop picking up your brother. You're going to drop him. Stop picking up your brother. Phone ringing, bills, no food in the fridge, feeling like a complete and utter loser and failure. That's the only way I can put it. And I walked into the kitchen because I had forgot I had put rice on and it was burning and I was fucking, it was like, Oh my God, what else? And as I'm, you know, blowing away the smoke and trying to empty out the fucking rice and salvage, if there's any rice in there to salvage, because at the time, even though rice is cheap, man, I, that's what we ate. So I was keeping whatever we had. And I heard a loud, loud crash and I heard Jacob cry and Kate had picked him up and was walking outside on the patio and had dropped him on the, they're not tracks. Is that what the door slides on? A track, right? And he, he had hit his face in his ear, side of his head on these tracks. And he had these crazy deep grooves. And I, I, yeah, I just whacked her right in the back of the head. I, I'm not a hitter. I'm not a, that's not my thing. I don't think ruling by fear is a good way to do it. And I, I knew right when I made contact, I could feel every part of my body just like, and I, I felt so humiliated and weak that I could not control that, you know? 
And I really beat myself up about it for a long time. I, I remember talking to my dad and he was like, yeah, it's terrible. But any parent that says they haven't lost their temper somehow or had it come out some way is lying. But it's good that you didn't feel that you felt terrible about it and that you know you're never going to do it again. But this doesn't make you a bad parent or a bad guy. And I, 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 I apologize to Kate about a zillion times and she and I have an amazing relationship now. And I'm so lucky that she found it in her heart to forgive me and, and, um, and be okay with it. We're not okay with it. I don't know what the words are, but like, you're going to fuck up as a parent. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to do things that you regret. And that's life. And you, you just have to be better the next time. And I'm not saying I didn't lose my temper ever again. Of fucking course I did. But I can, I handled it better, more maturely. And this is what I'm saying, you know? Um, it's all ups and downs. It's all this life. But if you stay here and you don't get to here or to here, this is the way to do it with parenting, especially in my estimation. But um, yeah, man. Uh, Amanda, I don't even know what the question was or how we went down this path, but thank you so much, uh, for reaching out and I hope we see you back again in, um, in Kansas city. What, what, why did I start talking about that, Matt? I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay. Um, yeah, this is from Rohit. You, uh, I love how you can tell stories that I can't relate to them. Feel super conversational and relatable. That's cool. Um, okay. This is, oh, thank you so much, man. I've been going through some shit in my life and listening to the two of you telling stories and just having a good time in the pod has been super uplifting. Guys, this is, these are the emails and the responses that, that, that fill me up, man. This is the purpose is if I can't believe it that. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. When I feel best is when I'm giving or when I'm helping. And to think that my silly dick jokes help in any way, shape, or form is so fucking, uh, is, is so humbling and, and remarkable. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Raheem. I appreciate it. Let me see if I can get to some more questions. Um, that's not a question. Um, okay. This is, what is going, what is this? I, I don't know who this is from. Uh, I can be ready. This is a little bananas. Um, okay. I'm not going to read this person's name and I'm not going to tell you what they're saying. That was, that was. Interesting. I just don't want to, this, with the amount of emails and the things that were being said, that seems like per somebody who could show up at my house. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Zach wants to ask, this is for Jacob. Why did you stay with your dad instead of going with your biological mom? Were you too young or what? Um, Zach. Listen, it was just something that he didn't have any, it was not up to him to decide. We split up when he was like a year and a half or two. And so it was just a decision that the biological mom and I made. That's all. And, um, but he, you know, he went up and visited for a while. So you grew up, watched the podcast. Thank you guys. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, but it was just, it wasn't something that I wasn't leaving the decision up to him. Here are some questions. Ray Moody, why don't you get high together? We do. I would also like to know if you would do mushrooms with me before I have my neurosurgery. <laughs> well, <sighs> why? I don't think. Oh, you live in Henderson? Oh, Rachel Moody. Listen, I, I don't, I don't know if you should be doing mushrooms before a neurosurgery. I, I, I think it scrambles your brain anyways. I know what neurosurgery means. It feels like it's an operation on the brain, but I think I'm going to need 
some more specific. <laughs> are they taking a piece out? Are they adding some in? What does that mean? Neurosurgery and mushrooms, I think are great, but I think maybe you might want to ask a doctor if scrambling your brain before neurosurgery is really the way to go. I listen, I'm up for whatever, but I probably won't do mushrooms with a stranger. That doesn't sound like fun. That, that's how you can tell that you've never done mushrooms before. You don't, mushrooms aren't like, hey, that's, I'm going to just take all these mushrooms and hang out with a stranger. That would be uncomfortable. Um, although I do hang out with a bunch of strangers on mushrooms, but it's not one on one, right? It's just me and a, and a group. But good luck. Let me know how it goes. Uh, let me know if I can get a piece of your brain for good luck. Do they give those away like rabbit's feet? Just a little chip. I've never seen a, like a little chip of a brain. Part of the frontal, the hippopotamus. What's it called? Not the hippopotamus. The hippophalamus. Wait, it made it. I'm closer with hippo, hippopalamus. Hippophalamus. Okay. Hippoclatamus. Hippophalamus, I think is right. Not phala. Hippopotamus. Did I say hippopotamus? Hippolotamus. Um, Matt, do you know what it is? Hippothalacris. Hypo. I, uh, I think it's hypothalamus. That's what I'm going to go with. Your hypothalamus right up front. No? Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can do this. It's got to be like the frontal lobe of your brain is frontal lobe. Hypothalamus, I was right. Fuck yeah. Yeah, the hypothalamus, everybody. Thank you very much, Dr. Wolf. You, you're welcome. Okay. Last, not least. Hi, my name is James. I'm a huge fan of the podcast and y'all's comedy at KMTC in Ohio. My question is, has anyone ever told you an insanely crazy story that inspired you for a story you tell on stage? I don't use other people's stories. People send me the craziest stories, guys. I love reading them. I would tell you I read eight out of 10. I read a lot. You send them on Facebook. Some people send these fucking diatribes. And, you know, if I get a joint in my hand, I'll read them. Um, and so people send me some crazy fucking stories that would make people on Reddit go, what the fuck just happened? But I don't use other people's stories. Um, be I have to at least kind of be there, I think for me to really be interested enough to tell the story. I'm not going to just tell a story about a random person that I don't know. That's the story for you to tell, you know, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't do that, but it sounds like you have a crazy story. So feel free to send it to me guys. That was, I, there were so many emails, but 12 of them were from that one person who were as insane. So, and they were not questions. They seemed to be very um, Russell Crowe, beautiful mind type stuff. Yo, that's like the... Matt, have I told the story about the, the st my stalker on this podcast? So I have a stalker. Her name is Sandy Wang. And um, I know. I know. It sounds like a porn star. Sandy Wang has emailed me a picture of the house across the street from my house before. Okay. So this is, okay, this is, by the way, I have a stalker and it's my own fault. I, cause I can't walk away from weird. I'm super like, what? So we were at the dog park, me and a buddy of mine. And I had met this tiny little Asian woman, um, walking her dog before. And I liked her and her dog. I liked mostly her dog because it was the only dog in the dog park that did not hump my dog. My dog, Rocky, would get humped mercilessly and just sit there like, are you going to let this happen? I'm like, dude, we, we will walk away. But he, he was not, he got humped by everybody. And so her dog was the only dog that didn't hump. And it was just like, I, it, pulling dogs off of my dog was just like, it was just like, I can't come back. But one day I'm walking with my friend and there was a pretty big dog park up on Mulholland in California, in Los Angeles. And uh, we're walking around the fence, which is what we used to do. 
And she was like, can I walk with you? And I said, yeah. And so it was me and my friend and, and Sandy Wang. And we walk one lap and Sandy Wang looks at me. And I, like I said, I'd talked to her at the park a bunch before then. She just looks at me and she goes, hey, you know, the Twin Towers came down because the government found a videotape of me masturbating in the living room. And my friend just looked at me and he didn't even look at her. And he looks at me and he goes, I'm out. And I was like, you're out. I mean, I want to see the video. How about like, what? What do you mean? They found it. Where were they in your apartment? I could not get enough of this story. So I'm hooked into the weird. Now, before then, she was like, I'm an artist. And I was like, cool. And she was, she was like, will you look at some of my art at least and let me know if you're interested. Can I send you my website for my art? And I said, absolutely. And so she sent me the website and I, nothing on there, it was decent art. Nothing on there was for me. So I emailed her from the website. A, not for me, but I'll pass this along to some of my friends. So she had my email. She has my email. Guys, I, I have in my email, ooh, 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 how many emails? Unread. So unread Sandy Wang emails, 3,000. That means the ones I haven't opened. I haven't read all of them, but I would open them. So she started, okay. I don't even know where to start. So she started to get, it started to get a little weird. And um, she started emailing me. And this weird, she emails, I think I mentioned like Russell Crowe, Beautiful Mind. She emails in words, but they're riddles and they're spaced out. And they'll, there would be some other emails attached. It turns out, okay, there's so much to the story. So she sends me one email that has the picture of the house across the street from my house. And I was like, okay, this is weird. But by the way, the emails are fucking, they said the N word. Some emails are just the N word, like a hundred times in all caps. It's just bizarre. And some of them are like riddles. I'm not going to read them to you. And by the way, Sandy, if you're listening, I love you. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not, this is not despair. I'm just telling everybody what the deal is. So she, I, when she sent me the picture of the house across the street from my house, I called a friend of mine who's in the secret service. And I said, Hey dude, this is a deal. And he was like, send me five emails right now. He was like, I go just five. He goes, I just need to see five random ones. And now he was a guy who read letters that were sent to Obama. So he was like, I can pretty, I can tell right away. And so I sent him and he got back to me so quick. He goes, not dangerous. She's not dangerous. I said, how can you be tell? He said, first of all, what he, this is crazy guys. He goes, one of the first things we look for is if they reference God a lot, because when they reference God, that means they're letting you know that your authority doesn't mean anything on this to them. And if you're referencing God a lot and God and God, somebody's going to knock on your door because it feels like you're telling me I'm not listening to you. I'm listening to somebody else. And I was like, okay. And he said, plus, this is like real schizophrenia. Like this, if you look at the patterns of her emails, they only make sense to her. In a, Like I said, in a very Russell Crowe, beautiful mind, it made sense to him, puzzle kind of way. So I'm like, okay, nothing to be worried about. He goes, nah, dude. And I go, should I block her email? And he said, no. And I said, why not? He said, she clearly wants to get in touch with you. And if you block her email, she's going to find another way to get in touch with you. And I was like, does that mean coming to the house? He said, could be. And I said, all right, we'll keep the email open. So I get these emails all the time. And you can tell when she's off her meds, I'll get like 30 emails in a day. So I'm, I feel like I'm pretty much done. And I get this phone call on my home phone one day. We still have a home phone. Um, and this was years ago. And I go, hello. And I hear Josh Wolf. I'm like, yeah. And I, uh, the guy on the other end goes, hey, this is, and I forget what he said his name was. I'm part of Tom Cruise's security. Can I talk to you for a second? And I said to him on the phone, fuck you, Dan. Cause I thought it was my brother playing a trick on me. Fuck you, Dan. I don't have time for this today. Let's try the Tom Cruise security bit some other day. Hang up the phone, call back. Same thing. Fuck you, Dan. Called back the third time. I don't know who Dan is. Do you know Sandy Wang? Now guys, I had not mentioned Sandy Wang. My Beth knew about him. Jacob knew about her. B 
because I had to, because fucking Jacob had no sense of stranger danger. You know, I walked into the driveway one day and he was playing basketball with this vagrant dude who I could smell him from when I walked out of the house. And when I walked out, he was like, all right, Jacob, I got to go. And he goes, goodbye, Greg. And I'm like, who the fuck is that, dude? He was like 10. I go, who is that? He goes, that was Greg. I go, does he live on the street? He goes, no, I've never seen him before. I said, how do you, how do you know him? He goes, well, he saw me shooting hoops. And he walked up and he said, do you mind if I shoot hoops? And I go, how did he know your, your name? I go, well, he goes, well, I told him I didn't want to be. <laughs> and I go, Jacob, what else did you tell him? And he said, well, not much. I go, well, what did you tell him? He goes, well, I told him, you know, just, he asked questions and I just told him things, you know, that you traveled a lot and were out of town. And it was just me and mom at the house most of the time. I go, what? He goes, I even introduced him to Rocky. Rocky was our pit bull who looked vicious, but was just, he stared at you because he was just scared all the time. He would, he ran away from squirrels, guys. Would come charging into the house if a squirrel dropped out of a tree. He was out of it, right? And he goes, I even told him, he said to me, that's a good looking dog. And Jacob goes, yeah, I told him, you could go pet him right now. He'd lick your face. He's scared of everybody. I'm like, Jacob Wolf, we need to, we need to go over some stranger danger shit, right? So Jacob knew who she was, and I needed to tell him. We were not talking to Sandy Wang, you know? So I get this phone call, and he says to me, Tom Cruise Security, he goes, yeah. He goes, look, I saw you on an email. And I go, are you getting the emails? And he said, your stalker, Sandy Wang, stalks four people. You, Sandra O. Oh, Tom Cruise, and I'm not going to name this other woman because she's a civilian, but she's a dentist in New Jersey. And her name is fucking amazing, by the way. But I was like, what? He goes, yeah, you're one of the four. You're the newest one. And he goes, I just want to make sure nothing's changed with her. Can I ask you a couple questions? And he asked me a couple questions and he was like, yeah, she's harmless, dude. She's just, unfortunately, mentally ill. So I got a stalker, man. And uh, I don't know what made me tell that story. Can I tell you the craziest thing? Okay. So she got arrested because I got this letter from her from prison. And by the way, when you read her emails, you're like, she's insane. And when you read the, the fucking letter she wrote, it was pristine language. The, like it was written. The, the penmanship was perfect. Turns out. I'll explain to you what happened and then I'll explain to you what she says happened. Basically, she was walking by a Mercedes dealership. And you know how when someone buys a car, especially at a place like that, they'll wash it and it's running right when you walk out of the door and you just get in the car and drive away. Well, they had a Mercedes running waiting for somebody who bought it to come get it and she just hopped in and drove away. So the letter, she was just so mad because she was like, how dare they set me up? I've been set up. They left a car running right in front of the Mercedes dealership. So I got in because who wouldn't? I'm like, what do you mean? Who wouldn't? She said, they set me up. And then she was like, I'm going to need some money for a lawyer. Can you send me $5,000? And I, at that point, I was still, I didn't know the best. So I, I, I was still responding because I was like, if I don't respond, is she, is this crazy? Is she going to come after me? So I was still, I wrote a letter back, but yeah, I, man, it's the only stalker I've ever had. I've had some people show up at my hotel room before, but they all worked at the hotel, which was kind of weird. Guys, can I tell you something, by the way? So I'm just noticing this now. I've been putting... So I used to have a ton of sunspots. Matt, you ready for this? I used to have a ton of sunspots and was definitely way wrinklier. I've been putting castor oil on my face at night because someone was like, it'll suck the sunspots out. It's crazy. I just know, I don't know if it's because the lights in here are super good. That is banana sauce. But the fucking castor oil on the face, I'm going to put it on my nuts. Um, don't ask me why I have sunspots there. Guys, listen, we did it. We did one, and we did one by ourselves. Uh, I want to tell you guys how, and I know this was, 
a, a, a podcast where I mention my gratitude and all that shit a ton of times. That's just where, how I feel right now. It's so weird right now as a dude who probably didn't cry for 30 years. I am bubbling with emotions right now. It's, an, it's a new frontier for me, um, but I'm so happy to be here. I cannot tell you how amazing the things are we have coming down the pipe line. Uh, I'm so excited for this year. I'm so excited for you guys to be here. Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. I am all over the place. Please, if you're in Los Angeles, May 9th, or you plan on being at the Netflix as a joke, I'm going to have some great guests. And if we can sell that place out ahead of time, guys, it's going to make me look good. New York, come on. Saturday night, April 13th, Gramercy Theater. Again, same thing. We sell that in advance. It's going to make me look good. So come one, come all, everybody. Uh, and I just want to thank you all so much for being here. Jacob will be back next week where his tummy wummy hopefully won't be hurting. And um, we'll see you this weekend in Huntsville, Atlanta. I'm so grateful for you all. Uh, if you like this podcast, tell a motherfucker. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Later.